Sportscasters is back. We hope you guys enjoy season one. Season two finally here. We thank you guys for staying in tune with us and we hope you enjoy episode 11 of season two. Before it slows up, before the window of opportunity closes up. I came, I saw, I conquered, I'm born. Yeah, I came, I saw, I conquered, I'm born. Yeah. Yo, he said get him, so I got him all. What's up, everyone? Welcome to season two of Sportscasters Media. I am Julia Santos, your lone co-host today. Sportscast is brought to you today by Rails Revenge and Slim Dev Music. I'm here with our special guest, Morgan Bates, and as always, our two analysts, Matthew Anderson, Sterling Harris, under Chris Lyles Jr. So the past week has been a little hectic, you know, uh, and been a couple upsets possibly in the NBA. So we're just going to get right into it we're going to first start talking about the clippers versus the nuggets and also the celtics versus the heat so i want to know what do you guys feel about what happened with the clippers first that was sad that was atrocious <laughs> that was, that sad. was there atrocious are, there are definitely some hurt clippers fans they went up two and oh and mess around and lose to the nuggets i thought the nuggets were gonna be like a good like in march madness you would call them a cinderella story but yeah. you know they always lose but the fact they were able to come back and now they'll be heading to the oh lord draw on the brink right there to western conference finals is amazing for them <laughs> if you told me in the bubble nuggets were going to the western conference finals i would have called you crazy yeah. Not nah, for real. Because, like, yeah. I did not expect them to go that far at all. I, I did expect them to make it, like, halfway and then get maybe yeah. booted out by, like, the Jazz. But Jamal Murray on one. I don't know what that man on, but it ain't nothing from this plan. If he can so. play like that to the <laughs> conference finals, I mean, he might give Lakers a run for his money. If oh, it's going to be Lakers in five. So, I mean, I mean, granted, I mean, like, obviously, they're going to I mean, if he can pull out some, just some wild stuff, that would be good to see. I just, I'm not, I hate the Lakers. I'm sorry. Uh, ooh. Like, ooh. Why would we get some hate? I'm sorry. I just don't like the Lakers. I think it's the LeBron fans that make me hate the Lakers. <laughs> we gonna get that one. She just hate LeBron. She said, "No, I whole- swear I don't hate LeBron. It's those fans. It, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't do it." See, I'm a LeBron fan, but I'm not like over to the point where it's like and, doing too much. Like, exactly. I, and, like, if I see LeBron doing something wrong, okay, what, what are you doing, LeBron? But other than that, I mean, I'm pretty. I think I'm pretty. Like, and I'm cool with those fans, but when you're like hardcore, crazy LeBron fan, I can't, I can't do it. Sterling, what's your thoughts? Man, I heard from you. Oh, so uh, one, if you would have said Nuggets to the Western Conference Finals, I actually wouldn't have called you crazy if you pointed out a, a couple of facts. Um, I think earlier in the podcast, we talked, me and Raekwon, when we talked about the Nuggets, you know, I think, or earlier, even before Raekwon came on, I was talking about how um, deep the Nuggets were and how they they play such great team basketball. But the thing with the the matchup with the Clippers actually favored them a couple ways. Um, when they started to win, the thing you started to notice was when the high pick and roll with Jokic and Murray, when Jokic got the ball within the paint, there's nobody on the Clippers team, I think, passed maybe – outside of Zubac, that was maybe seven foot, maybe. I agree. So Jokic was seeing every single passing angle possible. If he didn't – and if nobody was open, he had that little floater that he could just hit consistently throughout the game, which is really what got Denver's offense going. And on the defensive end, I mean, they kind of picked they, – they picked who they wanted to shoot the ball. And if Lou Will wasn't hitting shots, they had nothing really to worry about because now they just zoned in on Kawhi and PG, who was trying to create every shot because they didn't have a point guard – that could really create for them, that could really get them an easy shot. Every time Kawhi and Paul George took a shot in the last three games, they had to create everything from it, which I think exhausted them, which is what ended up being their downfall at the end, which was they was tired. <laughs> they didn't have any chemistry. And, um, and and Jokic on the other end of the floor could just do whatever he wanted to because it was on the on the floor. Now, when the Lakers, when they played the Lakers, he's going to have Dwight in his face, JaVale in his face, AD in his face, LeBron who's all about six, eight and up. So it's going to yeah, be a Lakers different type of animal. Team. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I, I a question well, about that. Oh, sorry, Chris. You, no, you I was know. just saying the crazy part about that was 
from when I watched the game, Jokic still seemed a little off. Like, he wasn't scoring as much as he normally does. So, for him to be able to still do it, he was able to do, plus have Jamal Murray in what he was able to do as well. And then that supporting cast, I mean, it, you couldn't help but, you know, Nuggets come out in game seven with that one. So, Hey, I mean, Jokic was putting a whole lot of pressure on that Clippers defense. I mean, like, and the biggest problem, like, the biggest problem was since he was is so talented of a passer, you yeah. couldn't help off. And if you did help off, that's when he had that little floater that he was getting, that running floater in the lane right there. But when they did help off um, early in the series, then it was kind of like Harris gets going, Murray gets going, um, Morris gets going, and then Millsap even got going. Like, it seemed like everybody on Denver's confidence raised to a different level after that after that game five collapse by the Clippers. And ever since then, you know, as high as the Clippers would get, Denver knew all they had to do was get hot in, in, a, in a two- to three-minute stretch and it was back in the game. It, they, almost, they almost felt like the Chiefs of last year for a minute. Everybody got big leads, and then, boom, you look up, it's a, it's a two-point game, four-point game. How yeah, I was going to ask that about that because uh, I wanted to know, like, what do you guys think, as for the Clippers, what they were missing, really? Because I feel like a part of what they were missing for why they were lacking was that they didn't have a bench. Like, their bench wasn't doing anything, helping them out, a lot of it. And I feel like Denver did. And then also, they didn't have anybody who was also seven feet tall. I mean, granted, because – I'm switching subjects. Because Houston is able to do what they're able to do because they're able to do it efficiently. They don't really need a seven-footer. But for teams that are not normally known for playing small ball, Doc Rivers is not known for playing small ball. He's going to play everybody to the best of their ability. But because the Clippers did not have that extra big man to help Montrez Hero and and Zubac and be able to do what they need to do in order to combat Jokic, then in the end it kind of led to their demise in the losing game seven. So I think – Oh, my God. No, I was going to say, I guess the question would be, do y'all think they go get somebody in the draft, or do you think that just doesn't fit their style of play? I think they may get – they may open up some pieces for a possible trade. Now, who's leaving? Don't know. Um, I heard <laughs> some stuff through the great vibes. They were going to get rid of uh, PG. But that's – neither he, he see Shea, so it is what it is. <laughs> I actually think – um. I had an idea. I think the biggest problem with the Clippers was they had nobody that could create for them, like, in terms of create shots for them. Like, when I think about Chris Paul, now I know, yes, he already left, but I think his departure from L.A. wasn't so ugly to the point to where there's – to the point of no return. I think he could go back to, to the Clippers. And I feel like for their team, him – they I say you put Kawhi, PG, Lou Will, Zubats, and, and they're untradeable. But – Everybody else on that Clippers team, because you'd you'd have to pay Hero, you'd have to pay maybe Shamit to keep coming off the bench. That's all tradable pieces. So I think OKC would be happy with getting since they already got all their millions of first round picks. I trade everybody and get Chris Paul from OKC and give those boys a playmaker to to help get Paul George and Kawhi easier shots. Because I think they couldn't get an easy shot past Game Four. They couldn't get easy shots, and they, and they wore on them. Yeah. I feel like the team chemistry with the Clippers just wasn't there at all. You have, like, Kawhi and PG, and like you said, it's hard for them to create – it's hard for the Clippers to create shots for them. And then I think they rely on PG and Kawhi way too much during the series. So, like we saw in Game 7, they shut PG and Kawhi down and they lost. Is that so much of – them relying on them? Is that just what Doc Rivers drew up? I think a lot of that is... I'm sure it's what Doc drew up. I mean, you know, PG and Kawhi are amazing players, and Doc Rivers wants them to have the ball, but if they're not making shots, they're not making shots. Right. That's a good point. It's interesting to see, like, Kawhi kind of usually plays that kind of basketball. You really got to see it with Toronto last year. It's like, all right, it's time for me to step up. I step up. And he was just just hitting them, hitting everything he needed to hit, but sometimes when it doesn't go well, you really would look for some help, but I guess we'll have to. They have plenty of time to go figure that out back in LA. Yeah, you ready? Exactly. I think have they already. Will they be playing in that new arena next year, or is it still being built? I think it's. I think it's. I think it's. Which is next year. So. Okay. Can they, can they move to Seattle, please? 
No, they gotta stay in LA. Now they got no. LA. Yeah, they gotta stay in LA. Nah, but I mean, that brings back to the next the next topic, which is about Kawhi. Like, he's still top five. What do y'all think? I don't think he's top five. I never. I. It was always debatable with him being top five, just because I always thought like, okay, when you look at the other players in the league and what they're able to do, I I don't know. I don't see him top five. At least top ten. At least top ten, right? Yeah, he's definitely top ten. He's no. definitely top ten. I never saw him as top five. I just Whoa. Didn't see him. Why no, didn't I mean, like, see him top five. Well, why is he not in the top five? He's in the top ten, a hundred percent, but he's not in the top five. Name y'all top five then. Right, I didn't hear you. My top five, I would say LeBron, Curry, Harden, AD. Kevin Durant, maybe? Yeah. KD. Sterling, I need your top five. Let's go. <laughs> Kawhi. Is a, oh, my Lord. Kawhi is a top five player in the NBA. <laughs> Please do no. not get me started. Are y'all, no. are y'all going to sit here? No. Are y'all going to really sit here and say Kawhi's not a top five player in no. the league? No. No. What? <laughs> what? No. Oh, my God. Give it to them. Okay. Give it to them. Oh, Give man. it to Oh, God. Kawhi <laughs> Leonard, two times finals MVP, defensive player of the year award, has been a consist- – has raised his game offensively to such a level that we looked at him as a closer for the last three years. Three of <laughs> Three years – for the last three – he's been – People argued if Kawhi didn't get hurt because Zaza Pachulia decided his foot wasn't in the right it wasn't in the right place, that they would have given Golden State a run for their money the first year KD won the title. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay, let me get to my top five. Let me get to my top five. <laughs> to me, healthy. Kevin Durant is number one. LeBron is number two. Kawhi is number three. Did you just put KD. Kevin Durant over LeBron? Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm so- I'm sorry. Who's the la- who, who's the who's the two time finals MVP pre injury? Did you just that put? Man? I didn't <laughs> you actually. Who is that man? Right, right, just right say. now. Right now. Who is, outside of Kawhi? Who is the reigning two times finals MVP? Right now, it's going to be LeBron. Hands down. It's, that should be your number one. Hands down. Pre- I said when healthy, didn't I? Kevin Durant didn't play this year. He didn't play this year, did he? Oh, okay, so even then, you still had Kevin Durant in your top five. He still didn't play right now. Yes, because he's that good. The only <laughs> person that can stop Kevin Durant from, from scoring is Kevin Durant when he doesn't shoot the basketball. <laughs> That's it. He's the only man that comes on the scoring. Okay, <laughs> and number four is AD and five is Steph Curry. That's my top That's five, but Kawhi is most definitely a top five player in the league. Oh, don't get me mistaken. <laughs> I don't know which <laughs> one is, is more a bad of a hot loss. take. This was the a fact bad that loss. you just put, but Kawhi is top five. I know that much. <laughs> Kawhi, okay, I know that much. This is the part that I didn't like when people, when Kawhi went through what he went through in Game Seven. What I didn't like, and the reason why I dropped him down for my personal vendetta, was because let LeBron had did any of that. When I tell you, news, Stephen A. Shannon. Well, I don't know about Shannon, but people in general would be blowing LeBron's. Everything they'll be blowing LeBron up, but because Did Stephen A. Shen and I blew up Kawhi last night, yesterday. That's one person. I'm talking about people, people that normally root for Kawhi, people that normally like Skip, Max, uh, what's the other guy? Oh God, I do not like him. He has his own. It's not Scott Benfield. Oh, uh, who is he? He's a. Uh, his last name I mean, is, is it Calvin? Is that his last name? Who? Colin. Colin. Thank Colin you. Cowherd. I couldn't think of his name. Thank we, you. We listen to Colin. Colin Cowherd. Yes. That's my guy. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I <laughs> could not stand Colin. him when he started talking about LeBron and Kawhi, and I didn't hear nothing from him when he, Kawhi had his little stint. So I'm like, that's the part that I'm like, I don't put him in the top five no more because at the end of the day, if LeBron would have did what he did, people would try to take him out of their top five. They were trying to make every other excuse like, oh, you know, LeBron did, did this. He didn't score in the fourth quarter. He didn't give it to this player. He didn't do what he needed to do. Okay. I only heard one person. Oh, that's Shannon. Sorry. So I only well, heard two what? people who said something. Well, that's why what? he's not in my top five. Them guys ain't me. All right. I'm fair. But I'm going <laughs> to let you know right now. <laughs> Kawhi Leonard. I'm not about to take Kawhi out of my top five because of one horrible series. That The reason why I'm upset with Kawhi 
from what happened is because he's such a great player. You're supposed to figure that out because you are a top five player. But I'm not going to say you can. Who's who's five players better than Kawhi? You want to name them? Was I just say? Yes. I said them? LeBron. I okay. said Curry. Okay. I said Giannis, <laughs> and then I said AD, okay. and then I said stop Kevin Durant. <laughs> right, I gotta stop you right there. I gotta stop you right there because we got ahead the head of, of of Kawhi and Giannis. We <laughs> seen what happened last year. We <laughs> seen what happened this year. All right, last First year. When when Giannis oh, was was t- up 2 0 in the in the conference finals and then Kawhi said, I'm gonna shut this man down. What Kawhi do? Shut that man down. You can <laughs> see Giannis past, past you if Giannis shot the ball past 10 feet, you knew the bus was losing the game. All right. That's what Kawhi <laughs> did to Giannis last year. All right. We saw what he did against the Jimmy Butler 76ers, who we could assume if Jimmy Butler stayed in Philly after what he's done in Miami, we could assume Philly's in the in the Eastern Conference Finals right now and maybe in the finals. And we saw what Kawhi did to him, hit the biggest shot in Toronto Raptors history, okay? That's what Kawhi did last year. This year, he played He played a better team. Now, he did horrible. <laughs> you can't lose three – you can't lose three straight 15-plus point leads in, in, in closeout games. You can't lose – you can't shoot one for 11 in game seven in the, four, in the second half. But as opposed to him and Giannis, okay, yeah, Giannis got two MVPs. What that mean? Where's the ring at? What did he do – when, oh, when, oh my God! <laughs> what did what did what did what did, what did Giannis do outside to get two MVPs? I mean, that's Hold great on. and all, but oh. in the head to head, in the head to head, Kawhi won. Kawhi won. In the order head-to-head. to get a ring, don't you have to do that in a team format? It has to be your team. At it was team versus day, team. At the end of the day, Kawhi has been on a, a team who got him to a chip. Now, I'm not saying that the Bucks cannot get there. All I'm saying is that they may need a little bit more pieces than what Kawhi has had. Kawhi has had a coach in Greg Popovich, great pieces around him. Uh, Kawhi had a great coach in Nick Nurse, had pieces around him, had a great coach in Doc Rivers. I don't know what the devil happened with the Clippers. All I know is that they need another seven-footer. Now, with that being said, all I'm saying is, is that as far as right now, right now, I'm putting Giannis over Kawhi. What does Giannis do better than Kawhi? <laughs> what does he do All better than Kawhi? Kawhi does better than Giannis is he has a shot, but that can be developed. That's no problem. So, That's so no Kawhi problem. doesn't have any, so Kawhi doesn't have defense player of the year. Kawhi don't got a don't got two Finals MVPs, two <laughs> one of them, one of them because he got a joke, one of them because he got a joke got LeBron in twenty. 20- 15 or, or 2014, whatever year it was, he got an MVP in the finals because he guarded LeBron James and, and neutralized to a point where he got him out of there in five. That's what Kawhi Leonard did. When was this? You talking about when Kawhi first got into the league under Greg Popovich? Oh, okay. I can tell you what he did last year against Giannis. You remember what he did last year against Giannis? <laughs> remember that one, right? Under Nick Nurse? Okay, cool. Okay. All right, cool. That the, the the Toronto Raptors and the Milwaukee Bucks were two evenly matched teams. The difference was one team had Kawhi Leonard and the other one had Giannis Antetokounmpo. That's the only difference, and that's why Kawhi's better than Giannis. That's okay, the let reason. Me let me that's ask the you this, reason. Man. Let me ask you this. One last question. One last question. Do you believe that in order to achieve championships, well, the main basis of what we're talking about, you have to have a solid coach. Not saying Mike Budenholzer is not a solid coach. I mean, only one coach of the year. Again, but at the end of the day, Nick Nurse got what the chip. So you, you, it you comes down to home. play. Then it comes down to the players. Two coaches of the year. Two great evenly matched teams. Milwaukee last year had Brogdon. They even had Miritich on their team. They had um, another guy, uh, Bledsoe. Brooke Lopez played out, out of his mind. The Raptors, who could, who had a curse running around their franchise because they couldn't beat LeBron James. They traded away who they thought was their best player, DeMar DeRozan, for Kawhi for one reason. Two, evenly matched teams. It came down to who was the better player. Kawhi Leonard proved that series, game three and on, that he was the best player in the series. And he's, the be- and he's a better player than Giannis, hands down. Agreed. What, what bad does Giannis – what what bag does Giannis have that Kawhi, Agree that Kawhi doesn't have? That's all I can say. Agree to disagree. All right, yeah, we're going to switch over from this heated topic. We're going to go into week one, NFL. So how do you guys feel with the games? I think, first of all, I think uh, Sterling hinted this Arizona's for real. I think the Ravens and the, yeah. uh, the Ravens and the Chiefs have picked right up where they left off last season. 
I was watching that Ravens game for a minute. That is just a triple option offense. That is a triple option. Like, that's read option, and they just going to get yeah. it. J.K. Dobbins had two touchdowns in the first matchup. I think we talked a little bit about him coming from Ohio State. And so it seems like a lot of teams are picking up where they left off at. We're hearing some buzz right now about Odell Beckham potentially being traded. I think everybody just needs to calm down a little bit. But uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Please don't bring up Odell right now. I'm not talking hey, about sports. Hey, he got an interview that just dropped, came out with uninterrupted, so make sure y'all go check that out. Uh, him and Bav Carter. But, yeah, so that's what I, those are my takeaways from week one. I think from a – not even from an on-the-field perspective, I feel like this was really big for the NFL just to be able to come back and have the parameters that they had set in place in order for them to come back. I think one of the things that I'm surprised that I haven't heard yet, I haven't heard anything about COVID at all. I haven't heard if a player got it or, you know, this, that, you know, how many cases. I haven't heard anything. So I'm like, okay – Y'all forgot we're still in the pandemic. I mean, you know, football's back. Woohoo. But all right, we need to see some actual, you know, stats. Like, all right, you know, this coach got it. These amount of players have it. Nah, nah, nah. I'm like, okay, y'all just practicing with COVID in your backyard. Okay, cool. I think they haven't had any cases so far because usually if they had any cases, they'll pop up. And I think they test daily, if not like twice per week. So I think the NFL has been doing a pretty good job about it. Uh, I, I saw some reports like last week before the season started, but I think they're doing pretty good right now. Sterling, you have anything to say? Uh, well, my Super Bowl pit looked glorious in Seattle. Um, <laughs> uh, Jamal, I, I mean, my Lord, Jamal Adams just did whatever he wanted to do against the Falcons, but, I mean, that's the, the Falcons. Um, Saints-Bucks was uh, very interesting. Uh, I figured that the Bucks would not be prepared to play the Saints that day because they have not played together long enough to play the Saints that day. Um, right. The Saints look, you know, regular. We got to watch Michael Thomas. on. He had an ankle injury, but um, – Saints did what they had to do. Got turnovers, got a pick six. Tom Brady didn't look the best, but that's going to come with Tom. Um, the New England Patriots look very intriguing with Cam Newton, that quarterback. Yes. Um, that defense is still is still something to reckon with because Belichick is the coach. I mean, it's just as long as Belichick is coaching the Patriots, they're going to be in every single game. And I picked over the weekend Seattle to win that game, but I would not be surprised if New England won just based on how they play. I mean, they – I mean – Who's going to get open for Seattle? I don't know. Um, Joe Burrow looked good in his debut. Um, you know, he got him down to – he got him down the field to, with a chance to win the game. You know, kick and missed it. It's okay. But he, he looked pretty solid. Uh, they played tonight, by the way, right? They yeah, Cincinnati, yeah, they, uh, Cincinnati. And, uh, and the Browns. Yeah, Who's Cincinnati and Cleveland. Who's y'all pick? Boy, for Baker's sake, I, the Browns better win. I I'm Baker. telling you. I'm <laughs> telling you. I'm telling you. Joe Bear, Joe Burrow better not get his first win against these Cleveland Browns with the Jarvis Landry's and everybody else. Yeah, yeah. I'm going with uh, Cleveland as well. What about you, Chris? I got the Browns. I mean, I got the Bengals winning. I, what? I really, yeah, I really feel like Joe Burrow can really do it, man. I feel like at the end of the day, we've given Baker Mayfield a chance after chance after chance, and y'all still giving him chances. I'm like, you know what? Ah. Because at one point, I did choose Baker Mayfield to win the majority of his games. But against this one, I don't know. I don't see hey, it. Hey, look, I got A.J. Green on my fantasy team, so I need him to get off tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping we can make that happen with uh, – just seeing who uh, Joe Burrow's security blanket will be. But, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go with Cleveland tonight. If not, because like I said, and then Odell needs to get the ball early. I heard a really good point. So they can script it. The first, usually the first series, maybe the second one is usually scripted. So I want to say them to get him the ball early and often, like some easy plays. Maybe it's a jet squeak, maybe it's a quick screen, not the forcing the ball downfield. Just kind of get him into the game a little bit, and we'll see what happens next. I, I really liked um, what I saw from the Denver Broncos, but yeah. you know. They, you know, they played the a team in Tennessee that they – I think that game was more – Tennessee just out-experienced them, even though Gostowski was – I mean, trying to hand them for the game. Yeah. But I like what I saw from Denver. I wish Von Miller was playing because that would have been huge. But that defense looks – that defense looks really good. And um, I like what I saw from the Panthers. You know, we're comp- like I said, we're going to be competitive. We're just not going to win. <laughs> but we'll be competitive in every game we play, and I feel like. Also, did y'all see the Pittsburgh Steelers? Did y'all watch they that game? They were solid. Whoo! Hey, they were solid. That's that's, a, that's gonna be a two-headed monster out of the AFC East. I'm mean, not AFC East. Um, AFC North, North with with that yeah. with that division. 
with Pittsburgh and because Bar- Pittsburgh's defense is so solid. I mean, they can match up on defense, and and with Ben throwing the ball, he'll get you twenty to, to twenty eight points a game. All the defense got to do is not allow over twenty over thirty, and they can win any game. Like you think, uh, you think that defense is just is not as good. Well, if you think they're close or just as good as defense when Trump Palabala was still there? Oh, it's never gonna be as good as that, but they got that was a they they have but they have the formula again in terms of they have a great safety in Minka. They got they got two serviceable corners in uh, Hayden and I, I can't remember the dude the others in this, but Hayden was a just at once upon a time was a top five corner. Or top ten corner, but he's a he's a really good corner, and then they got pass rushes and Watt Dupree, Hayward's great. I mean, like, and they got linebackers that can run. Devin Bush was a great pickup. Yeah, yeah. I, I love Devin Bush out of, out, out of Michigan. He was and he fit them so perfectly. They the formula is there for them. Now, can does Ben have enough on offensive end? Because I think he's still trying to really trying to figure out what to do in terms of the running back situation because Connor was the starter, but I, I feel like Benny Snell runs better than him at Benny times. And it's going to be nice. hard. Yeah. It's going to be hard for them to, to, to balance that out, but they can get both of them to click. Oh my God. And then outside you got Juju with Deontay and um they just got Chase Claypool who had a great catch. Like they got the formula is there for them to win. It's going to come down to probably how well their defense can, can play at a high clip and, and how many plays Ben and Juju and those guys can make on offense. But, but that Benny Stills, like, I remember watching him at Kentucky and obviously probably up and playing SEC, but he translated right into the league. Was James kind of hurt or something? Or I think he hurt him. I, I forgot what he hurt. I think he hurt something, though. He definitely hurt something. I can't remember what it was, but. I think it was a hamstring. I think that's what it was. Okay, but, yeah, so them Steelers are looking nice. But Steelers, y'all do predict the Ravens will come out of division in first place, right? Yeah, they'll still come out of the division in the first place, but yeah. Pittsburgh will probably be around 10 and 6, something like that. 10 and 6, 11. And four. Or I forgot they added actually, they added an um, extra game. What is, so what would it be like 10 and Seven. 11 and Seven. 4? I don't know how to remember. Yeah, it'll be 11 and 6. Yeah, because of the bias. Yeah. Bye weeks and stuff. Yeah, but we, who knows? Because COVID, we might have some cancellation to games throughout the year. But because that's a, that definitely is going to be a tough division. Oh, yeah. Oh, and y'all. y'all we had the real quick before I get Houston has the Ravens this week. I think we are back in H town. This might be a struggling one. We just had a tough uh, beginning of the year between Kansas City. And you Ravens. played the Chiefs. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said, ain't it? Hey, hey man, y'all finna have two. No, I played. We played the Ravens this week. And we no, no, I'm saying you, you said y'all had a tough week when you first came. I'm saying you played the Chiefs. Of course yeah. it's going to be tough. <laughs> yeah, and I'm saying now – I'm saying we had a f- f- tough first two weeks, but then we, we should get going after this one. So, yeah. Hey, y'all going to have two tune-up games to get ready for the season. <laughs> no, for yeah, real. Yeah. But, but, hey, this is our free season, you know what I'm saying? It's all good. Hey, but hey, another thing, though. Can we, can we announce that the culture change in Washington has officially started? Yeah. The Washington football team with a 17-point comeback versus the Eagles. Can we announce the culture change has officially begun? The revolution yeah. is here. All I right. Think, well, Dallas, I think, no, go ahead. I'm, I mean, Dallas, I mean, my Lord, I don't know what, I don't know what to say about Dallas at this point. They, there's no reason why they should lose to the Los Angeles Rams. There's not a single reason why Dallas should lose that game. They're disappointing. Uh, Philly, I don't know how they lost the game, but, but – all the credit to Washington. That dog um, gonna chase young man. That 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 D line for Washington is gonna is gonna cause a lot of people problems. Don't forget, Landon yeah. Collins is in the back. Landon Collins is still there. He was still, he was a great player about three four years. He's still there. They they got some they got some talent around that team. And Rivera, I think, is gonna start the gonna change the culture. Already starting off strong, seventeen down, coming back, winning 20, 27 unanswered. I mean. I mean, I, I like to see it. I love Ron Rivera, so I like to see it. Side, side, little question. Um, before we end, um, what what's his status on his cancer? Does anybody know? Like, is is he starting was, to get treatment or? I think he yeah, he hit, started like, treatment at halftime or something, right? Uh, yeah, something. he got an IV. He had a planned IV at halftime at Haskins, yeah. and Haskins uh, basically brought the team together. <laughs> yeah, that's so, what I mean. I mean. Haskins is a pretty good – he used to do it a couple times with Ohio State as far as, like, being the quarterback. A lot of times you want to be able to bring the team back from adversity. 
And because uh, that's a big part of quarterback is momentum. So he's able to do that. So I think he's the right quarterback for the job. They, people wanted them to go get two of them. I was like, just hang tight on Dwayne. And Dwayne was going to make it happen. He's done it again. Uh-oh. At least I mean, week one. We'll see what happens throughout the year. I, I think it's a great sign when you can come back 17 17- – you know, 17 down versus the, the team that's won your division, I think, the last two years. And, yeah. and but, but along with that, I mean, Washington has, has some talent. Like, they're not, I feel like Washington's problem, you know, for years has really just been who, where leadership was. So if Dan Snyder is finally, he's not probably going to sell the team, but if he's hands off of stuff and you bring in a guy like Ron Rivera, who we've seen, be great with managing personalities. Like he managed, you know, Steve Smith was still there. He manages Cam's personality perfectly. He, you know, when you have a dude like that that can come to an organization and then, and then kind of wipe everything clean, now that gives the team new life. And Haskins, who I always thought was a really a really good player, is going to be good in the league. Just needed that type of coach to come in and and be able to like understand him and feel where he's coming from as a player, the person more more so. I feel like his his relationships come to players more like how Andy Reid connects to players like as people. So yeah. that makes them want to play for him even harder. And then that's how you see comebacks like that when you're down 17 donut at halftime and, and you see your coach, the dude that actually cares about you, go get an IV at halftime because he's trying his hardest to do this thing while battling cancer. And that just makes you want to fight. And that's <laughs> and Washington came out with their hair on fire and just fought. <laughs> he got the win. Man. All right, y'all. So we're going to wrap it up for this. You know, we got a lot more weeks of football to come, so we would definitely get back onto that topic. Once again, thank you, Morgan, for coming on. And once again, Sportscasters is the, the, by uh, Official Dev Music and Rel's Revenge. Thank you guys for joining us for season two. We will be starting week two next week. This podcast is brought to you by Official Slim Dev Music and Rose Avenge. Stay tuned next week for more on Sportscasters Media. See you soon.